Hello everyone, David Giglio here with OZ Engineering and in this video I show you how to use the magnetic transient solver of Antis Maxwell to model a parameterized axial flux motor model, okay? So for this model we have a few parts which include the rotor hub here, the magnet, the stator coil, and the stator core. So it's really very simple to parameterize the rotor hub. So we what I did was first use the y-axis as a reference um, axis. So for the rotor hub, for example, I, I, I use variables for the outer rotor radius, rotor hub radius, and the inner rotor hub radius. You can define the variables before st you start drawing, or you can define the variables as you draw, and the, the program will prompt you to define the variable. So once we define the inner and outer radius of the rotor hub, we define the height using a variable, and then we can sweep this along the z-axis, which is the axis of rotation, and, 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 and then that's for that, for that object is done, right? So then for the magnet, we need to have variables for the inner arc angle, right, of the inner radius of the magnet, we need an arc angle for this, we need a, a variable for the inner radius of the magnet, we need a variable for the outer radius of the magnet, the outer arc um, angle, which they could be the same angle or they could be different. So depending on how you want to design your magnet, um, we need to have the variables defined, right? Similarly with the core, we have an inner radius of the core, outer radius of the core, and this is defined here, for example. So I'm using actually the inner radius of the rotor hub, that is the inner radius of the core, and the outer radius of the core is, is equal to the outer radius of the rotor hub. So again, we have um, a sweeping angle for the inner, inner arc of the core and the outer arc of the core. So we have the angles defined for that. Um, and then we have we have to define the stator coil, which here I have um, the is, now the naming convention can be a little confusing. You need to come up with your own naming convention that works with you. So here I have the um, radius of the stator coil out outer of the outer segment inside. So in other words. <laughs> the outer segment of the coil, stator coil, the inside. So that's this line that you see here. So that is positioned along the y-axis with this radius. And then it has a height equal to the height, I mean, the position is the height of the rotor hub plus the height of the magnet plus the height of the egg. That's the position of this line, right? Um, using the x, y, plane as a reference. So I shifted up that line, the bottom of that line is is um, positioned according to these <clears throat> values, all right? I'm using the variables of the parameterized motor, right? So once I define that line, I sweep that line using the the angle, <clears throat> um, angle span of the stator coil of the outside arc. So I have an angle span of the outer arc and I have an angle span of the inner arc and I and I use that. Um, I sweep it, starting um, along position on the y-axis, and then I and then at the end I I, I mirror all of the the, the objects that I created for the, the core, the stator coil, and the magnet. I I mirror this with respect to the y-axis. Um, so one, once these objects are created. First of all, I, I, I start everything, um, the bottom of each object is on the XY plane, and, and then and then I, def, I define the, the position of, of these objects with respect to the XY plane. So ba basically everything gets, all the objects that need to be shifted up, I shift them up with respect to the XY plane. So the, the magnet here, for example, is shifted shifted up by the um, rotor hub 
height, the bottom of this magnet is positioned the, the top of the rotor hub, right? And then this magnet has as it um it increases in in by hm. That's that's the height or or the thickness of that magnet. Okay, so and, it, and similarly, I do the same thing for the stator core and the stator core, and then and then once I create the sectors, right? This is one sector. This is an eight pole magnet, um, eight pole axle flux motor. So I have eight magnets overall, and I have eighteen stator coils and stator cores, um, segments, right? Sectors. So once I create the sectors, then I just duplicate all around the 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 the, the rotor hub. So at the end, the machine looks like this. See. I'd have the, the bands defined, so let me just hide the bands. Okay, we have all the mag eight, eight magnets, we have 18 cores or teeth, core teeth, 18 stator coils, right? And then we can see how the, how this motor will act, how it will change by changing the parameters. Right now, the, the, the height of the magnet or the thickness of the magnet is eight millimeters. I'll change it to 16. We see we see everything adjust to six to, to the magnet thickness is 60 millimeters. The the air gap between the magnet and the stator core and coils are the same, but I could I could change that as well. Have a variable for that. I could double it, so the gap doubles. I can increase the outer radius of the rotor. So if I go to my rotor category, rotor hub outer, I could. I can make this 80, for example. We see that that increase. We could decrease the inner radius of the rotor hub. See, there you go. So, but I could put everything back the way it was, back 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 to normal, the way by default. So, all of the geometry is parameterized. So, we can run a parametric optometrics parametric sweep. So in in the optometrics, for example, we can add a variable to sweep. So using the geometry variables, we can we can sweep the thickness of the magnet. We can sweep the air gap between the magnet and the stator cores and core. Um, we can we can we can vary any any geometric parameter, right? As long as it's feasible, and then it's not gonna as long as it makes sense. Okay, so. <clears throat> Then we can see how the output varies based on these geometric variations. Okay, so I have here a model that already solved. And if you see my previous video, I explained how the physics works of generating torque on the rotor, right? Mechanical torque, which is the opposite of the electromagnetic torque on the stator coils. So in this time, in this position, we see that the the coil the black uh, colored in black this is phase A we see at, at this time instant if you look if you look at this schematic here this is switches one and two closed right so in this circuit switches one and two closed so this is phases A and phase C energized okay so now we see the phase A has positive polarity the field that it produces points upwards that is aligned with the field produced by the magnet shown in red, which has um, magnetization upwards, which is in the same direction of the field produced by phase A. So phase, if the call of phase A will attract the red magnet, right, causing positive rotation counterclockwise. And at the same time, it will repel the, the magnet shown in blue, which has magnetization downwards, which... Um, the upward field from the stator coil, phase A, will repel the blue magnet because of the opposite magnetization, right? So, again, I also applied symmetry for this model. So, basically, I used the top of this axial flux motor um, plane. So, the plane, I'll show you here. I click this. You see, that's the plane of symmetry. So... The full model is a mirror of this model you've seen here, mirrored with respect to the symmetry plane. And we can see um, the results. 
Let me show you some results. So I have, um, no, not this one, excuse me. That's the model for viewing only. So I can show you here the, oh, uh, let's see, power, motor power, power mode, yeah, I got a lot of plots. Okay, so we can see it produces almost two kilowatts. We can see, um, let me see, I already showed you the pulses. Let me see, let me see the currents. Where are the currents? Oh yeah, the first one, first plot. So are the currents, three phase currents produced by three phase square wave voltages, right? By looking at this circuit here, we, we see DC excitation applied to the switches, which are applied to the standard windings based on the control of the time control pulses, which I have the used variables here um, that I defined. And I could show you how, where I defined it. That's it's over here. I have all of the definitions of all the variables used. Wait, this is, this is for the geometry. So I have local variables for the geometry and I have the global variables for electrical related um, quantities, such as time, frequency, period, and such, and such, okay? And it's recommended that all the time variables, right, the, 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 the pulse width, the rise full time, the time step, um, I mean, yeah, so all, all of the, 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 the time variables for the control pulses, it's recommended that they be um, multiples of the time step. So I have these other time check variables. I wanna make sure that all my time variables used for the control pulse or multiples of time step, so that when I analyze the results, I I know that um, each closing and opening the switch is 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 predictable and it's based on multiples of time step, so that you know um, how how the circuit is to be performing. Okay, so I've shown the time controls um, circuit. Um, I've shown the symmetry of the model. I explained the excitation um, polarity. Uh, I explained the physics. If, if you, the blog provides more detail, so the link to the blog is in the link of the description under this video. You can check that out to get more information to learn more about axial flux motors, the working principles, the physics, everything that's explained there. That's a very good resource for you to check out. I believe that is all for this video. Contact us to learn about our simulation capability and request a demonstration for us to show you how we can help you with your engineering projects. We provide training to use ANSYS tools and offer consulting services. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Be on the lookout for our new uploaded videos. Subscribe to our Odin Engineering YouTube channel. And like this video because I know you love it. Thank you very much. Have